Hi, welcome to Shuey's Barbecue, where you'll learn the tips and tricks to master your grill. Today, I'm going to be spinning a massive T-bone in the rotisserie basket. Now, if you do like this video, don't forget, give me the thumbs up, share it with your mates. But the best thing you can do for yourself is hit that subscribe and the bell button. And that way you'll be notified every time I upload a new video. So let's get into it. This is a 1.7 kilogram free range grass fed piece of beef from the legends at Gippsland Premium Meats out at Berwick, Victoria. So how do I prep such a cut of beef? Firstly, I'm going to get it out of the fridge and while it's still cool and easier to trim, I'll remove any of the excess fat I don't want. Not that I really need to remove a lot. There are so many options when it comes to seasoning our meat these days. Some people say no more than salt, others say pack on that flavour. I say do what you want, that might change from day to day. Today though, I'm giving this huge steak a dry brine. Now, using salt flakes, I'm going to give the steak a good covering. The salt will draw out moisture, then dissolve, and will be drawn back into the meat to season the inside and help tenderise it as well. So now, just place that back in the fridge overnight, or for at least a few hours. The steak has been in the fridge overnight. The salt has all dissolved and it has been drawn back into the meat. So we can now apply our rub. And I'm going to use the coffee rub that I made up. This won't give off any coffee flavour. It's just going to enhance that beef flavour that's already there. And the acidity in the coffee is actually going to help tenderise that beef. You can see that the meat has changed colour. That just means the salt is doing its thing and has penetrated the steak. I'll apply a light coating of olive oil to the steak and then just apply an even coating of the rub to each side of the steak and apply it from about 30 centimetres high. This allows the rub particles to separate, fall and spread evenly without clumping in patches. Grab your rotisserie and the basket attached already and now I can put the steak into the basket and clamp it in place. A good tip here is to measure how thick your basket is before buying your steak. Once you have jammed it in, put it aside until we get the barbecue ready. Today I'm going to be setting up a 57 centimetre Weber kettle with a rotisserie and a basket attachment to cook this monster of a steak. Normally, I would set up for a more traditional style reverse sear method when cooking a steak of this size. I just wanted to change it up a bit. And we're still going to take it to that perfect medium rare of 54 degrees Celsius. As you'll see, this method is effectively the same. We are going to get the same outcome in the end. As I've been using the reverse sear method for years now, and I just wanted to change it up a bit and try something new. I feel by starting the cook in that rotisserie basket, as that steak spins, it's just gonna keep marinating itself in its own juices throughout the cook. Unlike the more traditional reverse sear method where the juices just run off the steak. So to start, I'll half fill a chimney starter with briquettes and light them up. Once this is all ashed over, I'll dump this into a charcoal basket onto one side of the charcoal grate. I'll place some smoking wood on the lit charcoal. I'll be using red wine oak today. Then I'll add the rotisserie ring and place the lid on and allow the smoke to settle before adding the steak. It's now time to get the steak on. And because this is such a big piece of meat, I'll be adding a foil tray to catch the fat drippings, plus it helps with the cleanup. 
Next up, just slide the rotisserie into the motor and get it spinning. Put the lid on and make sure the lid vent is on the opposite side of the fuel, as this will ensure we are drawing the heat and smoke over our steak. I'm cooking at a medium indirect heat of 150 degrees Celsius today. This steak will be done in two stages, just like the reverse sear method. Slowly baking it at first to bring up that internal temp, resting it and then searing it until the internal temp reaches 54 degrees Celsius, that perfect medium rare. Now all up, this is going to take around about an hour and 30 minutes to fully cook this. Or, for those of you who like to use my beer timer, you're looking at about a three beer cook. I've been keeping a check on the internal temp of this steak. And it has just hit 37 degrees Celsius internally, so I've lit up another three quarter full chimney of briquettes because we're getting ready for the sear part of this cook. The internal temp has finally reached 46 degrees, so it's time to get the steak off, let it rest while we set up the Weber for the sear part of this cook. So let's get the steak off the heat and remove it from the rotisserie basket and just rest it on a chopping board. Add a few knobs of butter and loosely tent it with some foil. And we're just going to leave it there for 10 minutes. Now, add another charcoal basket and empty the other three quarter chimney starter full of lit fuel into both baskets. Using a hot plate like this JG BBQ one or a cast iron pan, put this directly over the heat and get it hotter than the sun or around 300 degrees Celsius. Okay, it is now time to sear our steak and we need to keep a close eye on it with an instant read thermometer. I don't want this steak getting ruined at the end of the race. So grab yourself a beer or two and have them sitting close by. Place the steak down and leave it there for around a minute to a minute and a half. It will all depend on the heat of your hot plate. Now just enjoy the sound of that sizzle while you're watching it though. Once you have a nice crust, flip it and do the other side. Once both sides are done, give the edge some loving as well. Remember to keep an eye on your internal temp the entire time. Well, how good does that look? And it was looking impressive before we even started cooking it. I'm not holding back on this one. No need to rest it, we've already done that. I'm just going to carve it up and dig right in. I'll remove both sides from the bone and slice them up. Look at that. It seriously doesn't get much better than this. Super beefy flavor and that rub I added gives it a nice little kick of heat. Yeah, I'm loving this one. The way to perfecting a medium rare steak is one, dry brining it for at least a few hours before you cook it. Two, keeping a close eye on the internal temp during every part of the cook. Three, searing the steak over a heat source until 54 degrees Celsius is reached. Do these three things the next time you want to cook a steak to medium rare and you'll have perfect results every time. Thanks for watching. If you do like free stuff, check out my Instagram for giveaways and extra content. Cheers. This is a 1.7 kilogram free range grass fred Good. This is a 1.7 kilogram free range grass Oh shut up bird. This is a oh, now I forgot what I'm saying. This is a 1.7 kilogram free range grass fred ah. This is a 1.7 kilogram free range grass fed piece of be oh. This is a 1.7 kilo, that bird every time I speak. And it stops again.
This is a 1.7 kilogram, there it is again. <laughs> 